Live, live, live. How's it going, Guru Nation? Good morning. Uh, and very special regular guest, Ashley Margo. We're here to talk about clinical research careers. She's a guest. Uh, you're the official, not guest, internship <laughs> um, person during the CRA Academy. And you also are involved in the CRC Academy. Mm-hmm. You you deal with a lot of career related issues from the students, the interns. You've probably noticed by now how long you've been doing this for us. Oof, I think since 2020, I believe. All right. So you've seen yeah. the students come and go. Mm-hmm. You've seen successes. You've seen probably those that didn't do so well. Mm-hmm. You probably can break them into groups of like why certain people do well and others don't and why Mm -hmm. certain people seem to have success right away and others don't regardless of the job market i mean right now it's like a little bit of a tougher job market yeah but uh what are some common themes you've noticed from both academies cra and crc for sure like what makes certain people receive success right away and others not I think it's also, it can be equated even to those that um, are, you know, in the industry trying to move up. Um, If you're not utilizing the resources you have um, adequately, you're just, you know, I mean, it doesn't mean that you can't be successful, but it does mean that you're going to have a harder time. Um, The great thing about the CRA Academy, including the CRC Academy, is that you guys have a series of resources that can really, if utilized correctly, and if actually, you know, actively practiced, can can really make a difference for the individual. And not so much just getting exposure to these resources, but also like a practicing CRA or even a practicing CRC, you know, you, how do they say, you know, fake it to make it right? Because as you're getting exposure and experience, you're able to understand the inner workings, you're able to understand the internal mindset of what that role actually requires. So when you get into those interviews, regardless of how much experience you have, um, you're able to discuss these processes, but not just discuss them as if you're reading them off of a list verbatim, but actually discuss them in the way that is important to be able to explain and understand the trial, what is expected, processes that come in 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 very specific and, you know, rare cases and scenarios, because that does happen in clinical trials. And those are the things that they're wanting to know. And ultimately, you know, you can get you can get the best one-on-one training from somebody for one session, two sessions to learn about all the basics. But if you're not getting exposure to the systems, if you're not getting, you know, an actual, you know, internship or being able to look at documents and implement them within the system, if you're not able to read and kind of get a critical and analytical viewpoint of how these patients are being processed and why they're being processed the way they are and, you know, um, referencing off the protocol and all those kinds of things, uh, if you're not getting that exposure, it's very difficult for you to come off as, I would say, you know, genuine experience um, and just a really good understanding as opposed to just somebody that just read off of material to learn, right? And I think that that is why the industry sometimes has, you know, um, gets nervous about hiring those with no experience that, you know, barely get any exposure through uh, training because, there's no experience. And this is why I've always, you know, vouched for y'all's academy because you guys not only give that experience through the internship, but you actually have access to the most common systems that are used, not just at site, not just at CRO, but also at the sponsor level. And that right there is key. I wish I had that before I came into the industry. So we actually, I'm glad you brought it up. We just partnered with, for this new academy starting the new CRA Academy starting in uh, actually next week, April, mm-hmm. April, uh, the week of April 15th. And uh, there's still time to get in. Uh, the first live class is not till the following Saturday. But mm-hmm. we partnered with Creo for the CRA Academy so far. Nice. I think there's there's ways we can incorporate it in the CRC too. We're just trying mm-hmm. to figure out how. But there, uh, we've we've partnered with Creo. So mm-hmm. they, we have the Creo eSource and the eReg, 
and then we have the brand new Creo tool, their EDC um, competitor, which is Creo Reviewer. Oh wow! Okay. And so they're use they're gonna use the latest things like eSource, eReg, and they're gonna actually be able to monitor on like a kind of a relatively new platform that I think is only gonna gain more and more traction but that's awesome i already know at least i think two not just site site networks in texas that also expand out of texas that use creo so that's awesome and for those of you that aren't i guess understanding of of how it works for cras when you are going through the process of systems um sometimes in you know new new bbs newbies think that you know okay well i know this system that's good enough the thing is as a cra especially a traveling cra you are going to be adjusting to each site's sops you're going to be adjusting to their systems so getting to know more than one more than two more than three systems that right there is a huge huge win and even at some points what i give to clients is that is a point of negotiation actually if you can you know describe that well in a in a in a um in an interview but yeah i mean the more systems you know the better and it's just a common factor known factor that if you know more than three systems hands down you are going to be that much more adaptable in the industry because there's i mean i already know i think eight eight systems probably eight or nine oh, um wow. yeah there's there's so many and so again um the more that you know the better that's the thing about working at a site at the site is mm-hmm. you you'll learn systems like If you're at the right site, you'll learn systems quickly. Like you'll Mm -hmm. actually have to use systems. We use IRT. This is just one study I'm looking at right now. Okay, IRT, which is uh, the sponsor zone. Then there's Firecrest. Then there's SIP, Shared Mm -hmm. Investigator Portal. Then there's the ECOA, ERT. Then there's CREO. We use CREO. Then there's uh, Patient Ace, which is one of our other patient recruitment portals. Then there's Judy for age, uh, for SAE reporting. Not Judy Galindo, Judy yeah. uh, SAE reporting. PPD Labs, Viva mm-hmm. Vault for EDC. SUSARS is AG Cloud. Yeah. Uh, that's just one study. Mm-hmm. Then we go to another study. There's like all other different. Yeah, the vendors, portals. the vendors along with the EDC systems, it's just it's it's constantly just a run on uh, knowledge and and just experience. And ultimately, again, like if you know more than three systems, platforms, even though they are, you know, different, they merge in technicality sometimes when you get an exposure to a lot of different ones. But one of the things that I do, again, I, I hear not just from, you know, sometimes the students, but definitely from my outside clients that are trying to get in the industry is just that, oh, you know, well, I have a really great background. Like, for example, somebody that's a physician or a PA, like, oh, yeah, you know, I don't have a hard time getting in the industry. Number one, the clinical industry and how you get processed uh, and hired is definitely way faster, way quicker, especially if you have a license than than in the pharmaceutical clinical research industry. Definitely different, hands down. Um, yes, you're that much more enticing because you have a license, but you still have to go through the run-of-the-mill process. The other thing is that you have to understand from the company's perspective, especially if we're looking at a CRA level, you're considering CRO and sponsor. These these companies, oh, you know, time is money, and the whole reason why they're trying to hire somebody is because they have a study that is really needing somebody to come on. So um, it's not just about you know getting you on board and making sure that you're you know a good candidate, but they're also looking at the efficiency in which they can hire you, right? So you may go be going up against somebody. Let's say you're a PA with a license and you have exposure to exposure, not maybe actual direct experience, but exposure to academia research in a medical in, uh, institution. But you are going up against, let's say, a clinical research coordinator who does not have a license that has maybe one year experience, but they have three systems on you. And they also have the understanding of the protocol and the process. Naturally, more than likely, you're going to get beat out by the CRC because one, they can easily and vocally discuss the situation, scenarios, and processes. And that's probably going to break down the 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 time frame of that person being able to get onboarded and be under like 
you know, understood, understood and how they're going to be processed with the study and or studies, you know, and so understand that it's just not the same. And getting that experience, exposure, guidance, getting those systems behind you. Um, and also, again, the experience is just going to amplify you. Um, I do think that sometimes the the response is, oh, you know, yeah, but I have to wait, you know, one, two, three months, blah, 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 you know, and, and then start from there. Yes, but also understand that now because you have that to amplify your resume, you can actually potentially even negotiate more than what your potential starting position might have been without any exposure, right? And so again, it's it's kind of like a tit for tat, you know, you have to be aware of, you know, how am I, what am I sacrificing and what is the reason that I'm sacrificing it for and is that worth it? And I think hands down, it's worth it. Um, so, you know, again, it just comes down to you understanding the industry, speaking to those that are already in it, that know what to expect and just being willing to, how do I say, um, I guess you could say remove the ego and your past experience and understand that there's people out there that have already been through this process um, and that know people that are putting others through the process through HR and, um, you know, there's just, you just have to go through what everybody else goes through and prepare. And you work for a sponsor. You previously have worked for a CRO. Yes. Uh, what, have you actually been rejected from a job ever? Uh, rejected? Mm. Yeah, like you applied to one, because I know the two places that yeah. you work. Recently. Yeah, the past two areas, I would say the past like four and a half, five years, um, no rejection. But prior to that, this was when I was barely coming into the industry. There was rejection, but it was more on the basis of they wanted to put me in a higher position that I, at the time, did not feel ready for. Um, and so... Um, uh, you, know, you rejected yourself. Yeah, in a sense, there was a discussion, and I I stated that they were giving it to me, and then at that point they rejected me because obviously you know I wasn't showing confidence. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm glad I did that because uh, again, it was I think it was the right thing to do. And everyone's concerned about resume. They think resume mm -hmm. is like the end all be all. Yeah. And there's people with no experience that say, well, how do I fix my resume? And this is something that you actually teach. Mm. in the CRA Academy, CRC Academy as well. But there, I feel like there's only so much you can do to your resume. Yes. Uh, what, what do you think about this? So I think there's about like three or four prongs to this. So it's not just the resume. It's also your LinkedIn. And also depends on the, the position you're going for. So for example, CRCs, my my recommendation to them would be different than for CRAs. Why? Because CRCs, usually these are smaller sites. They don't have third-party recruiters helping them hire. So this is more of on the ground, on the boots, exposure to the site, to the finding who the uh, project manager, is, uh, hiring manager is, and all those kinds of things. So that's a different approach for CRAs. Uh, also, they have their own approach as well. But definitely not a lot, a lot of networking. And I think that that's the other thing, you know, um, you know, for these big companies, you are a number and that's just how it is. You know, you're a number with quicker, you get a comfortable with that, the faster you'll understand that, you know, just the, getting your resume done and only doing that and only submitting that through their website that probably has AI processing it for you, for them, um, you know, is not, it's not going to do enough, right? You need to be able to network. Um, I even recommend, you know, getting associated with organizations that help advocate for you. So again, another reason why I really like the CRA Academy and the CRC Academy is because, you know, I'm in meetings with you guys outside of this when we're doing our own things, when we're talking to internal CROs and sponsors and I know and I hear you guys all the time advocating the minute they say, hey, I need a CRA, or, I need a CRC. You guys are like, hey, well, I actually have XYZ students. Give me your email. I'll shoot over the resume. So one, you guys are already kind of doing the internal networking for them. Two, you the know. The beginnings of it, yeah. Yeah, the beginnings, yeah. And then on top of that, you know, uh, you guys are also associated with, you know, different conferences and being able to provide, you know, uh, that knowledge to the students that aren't adequately networked and aware of these dates and conferences. Now, whether they can afford to go, that's a whole other story, but that's normally the next step that I tell them, you know, it's like, you need to go to these conferences, you need to have your resume ready and prepped, you need to discuss and talk to these individuals, 
don't just be, you know, headstrong and, you know, uh, tunnel vision to one particular role or thing, be open-minded, have a game plan, be prepared. Um, and again, you know, this is the difference between those that I've seen that have success and don't. Uh, usually the way it goes is, you know, in, in the call, I'll have a student say, or, or a client say, oh, you know, I have such great experience. I've already been applying, you know, I need you to help me find a job. That's usually the ones that aren't you getting utilizing their resources they're usually just kind of immediately going to you and saying i need you to help me with this and then there's a other type of student or client that will come up and say hey i have done x y and z is there anything else you recommend i do is there anything that you think that works better for me given my background so they're trying to get the understanding they're trying to get the the process going in their own minds so that they can take advantage of that and do what they feel is right for themselves because ultimately we can give you all the guidance right but um it's your situation, your scenario, you know, your life, your financial stance, and only you know how far you're willing to take that, right? But we're just here to to guide you in that process. And so I think that's what makes the difference. Um, a lot, I would say a lot of times, not everybody goes through all the systems, not everybody asks questions in those processes. And I, that is the problem right there. Um, you know, if, it's one thing just to have it and to look through it and skim through it. It's a whole other thing to have a full understanding of it. Um, and so, you know, yeah. So with your coaching, like you've, you've actually prepared people for interviews yes. and you've been through some of these interviews. Like we talk all the time about sites. I think even if you were in the CRA Academy right now, mm -hmm. you should apply at a site because the market is yes. the, I think at the site level, the market's actually really good. The job mm -hmm. market. I think at the CRO level, they're and sponsor they're, level too, and sponsor right because you work at mm -hmm. a sponsor. I was going to ask you about that. Like, does is the sponsor that you're working for hiring, or what's going on? Uh, not at, not at the moment. No. Um, for other roles, yes. Um, but yeah, there's a there's a lot. There's definitely a lot happening. I do think that in CRO and sponsor, there's more of a um. How, how do they say that it's an industry market, not the interviewers or um, appliers market, if that makes any sense. I don't think I'm saying it right, but sure. um, I just think that there's I, I that's where I feel the market is at the moment. And you're 100 percent right. Site level is great. And I think that for CRAs, when they get uncomfortable with that, I try to remind them like, hey, this industry is evolving. There are a bunch, a bunch of site networks that are so big that have their own, you know, compliance department, which is pretty much another word for CRAs, right? And so don't assume that, you know, you won't get good paid offers from a site network um, as a CRA or an in-house CRA for just that particular site network company. Um, but again, just being mindful of that, asking these questions, because you don't know what you don't know, right? Um, mm -hmm. And so I what definitely- What would you do though, like right now, if you were, a candidate with let's say very little experience just maybe you took CRA Academy mm -hmm. CRC Academy you've done some interning at a site uh mm -hmm. you've done some shadowing like what would you actually do your goal is to be where you currently are at a sponsor yeah. but what what would you do I mean I feel like you would still be applying to sponsors but you would probably yeah do something else. yeah I would definitely you know um ultimately like at your regional level, you're going to hit some sort of like marker, right? Where it's like, okay, I've already applied pretty much everywhere I can in the areas in which I'm willing to travel to. So one, immediately being comfortable and aware of, okay, where am I willing to travel to um, as far as, you know, works, work-wise, right? That I can actually travel by car at the moment while I'm applying to those. And so get that range of miles, start to utilize Google or whatever, you know, any resources I have that would help me find different sites and or site networks. Um, find them on clinicaltrials.gov. Those that aren't on clinicaltrials.gov, again, reference them off of the list I had on Google. Once, that's how, once that happens, call all of them, find emails, find them on LinkedIn, submit my resume virtually, right, as much as I possibly can. Once that's done, actually take time and schedule points to where I can actually visit in person. 
and find out who the person in point of contact is, what their schedule potentially looks like. You can all do all that, you know, either virtually or by phone. And then when that once when that happens, actually make the time to actually go in person at the time that they're usually available. And, you know, make sure that I'm hustling. I mean, that's just what it is, you know, and I like to tell people that, you know, I was doing that way before even the research industry when I was in when I was in uh, pre-med, pre-PA and all of that, um, I, everybody was, you know, trying, struggling to get exposure and to shadow. And we, I was in a small rural area. So that's, it's already hard as it is. And there were so many applica applicants that are trying to go to that route. But well, the way I beat everybody out, I got almost 300 and some hours from different specialty surgeons from, uh, from my region. And I was able to do that all in a span, I think of, I think three months, mm -hmm. I was able to do that in Spanish three months, but because of that process that I did, you know, it's people don't like it. It's annoying. It takes time. But ultimately, again, it comes down to what's the sacrifice that you're willing to give. You have to give in order to get. And that's just like the balance, just how it works. And so um, people just I feel like most of the time it's, you know, they think if, you know, if I pay for something then I'm going to get everything back, it's no, you have to there's still interaction you have to do. There's things you have to, there's work that needs to be done. And so um, I think, again, the quicker that you are comfortable with that notion, um, the faster it is that you can start making decisions that actually work for you. Um, and so, you know, we can all pout about the scenario and the situation of things, but ultimately nobody's Nobody has your future in their hands, only you do. And so whether you succeed or fail really comes down to the amount of effort you put behind you. Yeah. Um, and so. And a lot of people discount the networking. Uh, yes. And we have Latinos in clinical research, which is free and which is open to all backgrounds. doesn't matter if you're not Latino. We have mm -hmm. people from every background on the f monthly Zoom meetings. We have a upcoming Meeting yes. coming up, no? Yes. Is it we next do. week on Tuesday? Uh, no, not next week. I think it's ah. the following, actually. Okay. Well, two weeks mm -hmm. from. Yeah, we'll get. Let me get the date, actually, so mm -hmm. I can tell people right now. It looks like it's going to be April 23rd, Tuesday. Oh, so then is it next week? Sorry, I'm not looking at a calendar right now. <laughs> is it the 16th or the 23rd? 23rd. Okay. Tuesday, April 23rd. Mm -hmm. If you're not subscribed, it's free. Latinos in clinical research.com. It doesn't matter what background you are. There's. At the end of every session, we usually have Q&A, and we usually have, like, even sprinkled in between Q&A, mm -hmm. so we'll usually have a special guest, but a lot of times, the themes circles back to career, like, yeah, I need a job, I just had this job, now I want to do this, we have a lot of, I'm a CRC, I want to be a CRA, mm -hmm. we have a lot of, I'm trying to get in, do you, you guys need a network like there's people in these groups that are it's free they want to help they're out yeah. there helping we've had people get a, a applied or actually hired mm -hmm. because of their networking in latinos and clinical research so like people okay they think okay like it's like exercise you got to do it you got to eat right and exercise to lose weight it's the same thing with career like mm -hmm. you have to network in order to get new jobs or get better opportunities but everyone only does that when they need it yeah and they don't do it constantly which i think the best way is to do it all the time now obviously if you need it you're gonna do it too mm -hmm. but you gotta actually go in there and Commit. contribute something yeah yeah and i think that and that's the other thing too is that also understand that if there's there's nothing that we can assist you with, which there's no, you know, dragging you along the way of like, hey, well, hold on, you know, maybe we can do this, we can do that. No, it's more like, okay, well, we also know XYZ individual. Again, networking is also for the connections within the connections. You know, these things happen. Um, there's also, you know, uh, conferences out there, obviously. Um, I do feel like the only ones that I've actually seen these kinds of things happen at is um, definitely ours, oh, yeah. the Save Our Sites conference. Yeah. And there has been ones who were, so I'm not going to discredit other others, right? But I think SCRS, but I've never really seen yeah. it in any other ones, to be quite honest. I'm actually um, going to ACRP. I haven't announced it to anyone yet. 
Oh, nice. Well, in Anaheim in May. <laughs> yeah, you hear it here first. Anaheim in May. Um, I'll be at ACRP. Thanks to Viva and Inato, both. Mm-hmm. Nice. We'll have a Viva during the day, Inato after party by night. Subscribe to my email list to get more info. Are you coming? Uh, no, 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 I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no, we got we have a lot of planning going on in the background. So, you know, it's yes. the... That's got to that's got to come. We got our own conferences. Yeah, we got our own conference. I normally don't go either, but it's in my own neighborhood. Like that's my hometown, Anaheim. So I gotta go. Gotta represent. (laughs) Yeah, I go to Anaheim all the time. I'm actually going tomorrow to Anaheim. Nice. So I'm all the time. So once I found out it was there, I figured out a way to get to be able to contribute and. Thanks to Viva and Inato. But there's going to be a lot. Of, you've been to ACRP. Yes. Last yeah, I, I like it. It's big. You know, I mean, well, what I like is. How many is, people you know, were there last year? Oh, I mean, I don't know. It was, it was like more quite, than SOS, right? Like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like and more than, SDR, more, and more or than like, SDRS. Um, or like double, like X. triple. What am I expecting? I haven't mm-hmm. been. Never been. Well, it was in, I think it was in Austin. Honestly, my, my mind's a little foggy on where it was. I think it was Austin, but um, yeah. no, it was actually, sorry, it was Dallas. Um, and no, 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 I, I believe it was not, definitely not 10X, but I would say maybe like 5X. Wow, that's big time. Three to 5X, yeah. I was. Okay. I mean, from what I can, what I was able to gauge. Now, everybody was not interactive of all the sessions. Um, yeah. I do feel like it's more of a one or two and people enjoy the city kind of a thing. Um so, so yeah, I would say there was That's definitely. That's why we're doing that after party on Saturday. Yeah, yeah. The, I was about to say the reason why I liked it was actually because the after parties, you know. The but after there's no official. Like it's not like SOS where you have an official after party. It's yeah, no, like no. People are jumping. Ar- yeah, people are jumping around to the after parties. But yeah, it was so a lot we'll of fun. For Inato, we got our own with Inato. I'm gonna send an email blast soon. We're finalizing like details. But it's, it'll be awesome we'll do vlogs we'll do podcasts and then during the day on saturday with viva i'll be walking the exhibit floor so or hall, the, whatever this called. is like one of the examples that i do like to tell you know clients is that you know individuals like you um and or those that are actual site you know people uh when you're a newbie you don't realize that these conferences aside from people just showing People are actually sanctioning off time to meet with various individuals that want to network with them. So if you know, if you're following the people that, you know, you you want to work for and they're announcing, usually they announce that they're going, right? So that other their other network knows that they're going. Um, you want to reach out and say, hey, I would love to meet you. Is there a way I can schedule five minutes of your time, 10 minutes of your time? Where do you know where you're going to be so that maybe I can just kind of jump in real quick and, and you know, introduce myself? They're always very welcome of that. But again, if you don't know these tactics, if you don't, you know, take the initiative to do this, uh, again, you also have to present if somebody says, OK, well, I cannot afford to go to the conference. All right, well, look up the conference. Who are the individuals? Yeah, you can go, find them like, on LinkedIn. Give them a you. background. You go, if yeah. you get to Anaheim, all right, forget about uh, my event with Anato. You could go there. You just All you got to do is register. It's not even part of ACRP. You can just go to Anaheim, stay around the place where they're doing it, mm-hmm. and network with people. Like You don't actually need to go into the exhibit sessions hall. yeah by the way the valley is not even there yeah i was about to say like you don't have people standing there saying hey we're hiring you know what i mean like that you know that uh-huh. that doesn't that doesn't happen uh, i mean sometimes you might have that you might have that maybe from one or two sponsors but even then you know the first thing that they ask is do you have a resume so what you can do is stand outside take a peek in and see okay who is it wait for them to come out and approach them approach them. Or again, if you know the organization and you are following them on LinkedIn, they're going to announce that they're going to be there. More than likely, they're going to announce the individual or the individual themselves is going to announce they're going to be going. They're going to tag the company. Again, if you're not utilizing your LinkedIn accurately, if you're not following the right people, if you're not on it, you know what I mean? Those kinds of things are going to slip from your fingers. And also, you know, if you really do want to attend, you can write out this huge letter you can give your description and reason why. You can give your background. You can even provide them your, your, you know, your entire plan of what, who you're going to apply to, why you need it, all those kinds of things. Submit it. You can find the founders on LinkedIn. You can 
hound them if you need to. I mean, whatever. The point being is that at least give yourself that opportunity. Yeah. Try, you know. There's also if- sites going. There's plenty of sites that are going yes. to these big things. Like <clears throat> 5X SOS size, so five times the size of SOS, pretty big. Mm-hmm. Like, I think SOS is one of the only conferences where, like, the sessions, the actual meeting itself, because everyone's together. There are breakout groups, but that's one of the few we try to keep the content to where it's actually worth going. And it's yeah. so affordable. Like, you can go. You shouldn't even think about it. But something like these other conferences, you know, they're kind of pricey. I don't blame people who are looking for jobs why they're not actually attending Mm-hmm. but you can travel to the place and network. And if you, like you said, if you plan smart in advance, email, use LinkedIn. Hey, where are you going to be? I'm going. Are you going to this after party? I'll be there. If no, if you don't have a place to go in Nato after party, stay tuned for details. That's where I'm going to be Saturday. I think it's May 4th. Mm-hmm. Yeah, May the 4th it. be with you. <laughs> May the 4th be with you. That's right. It is Saturday, May the 4th. Mm-hmm. We'll do something cool there, but shout out to the Inato people and then shout out to Viva. If you are going to be in the conference, come to Viva's booth. I'll probably be around there. Nice. I'm sure you guys are going to do great. <laughs> yeah, I think it'll be fun. Like mm-hmm. I've, I've gone to other conferences before, but not ACRP. I've been wanting to go. I couldn't not go when it's in Anaheim. Like the travel thing is, I don't need to really worry about travel. Mm-hmm. So I took care of it. Uh, Ashley, I know you got to go, but uh, what are some of the things you're going to do today to seize, uh, well, seize the day? <laughs> seize the day outside of my usuals. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I always think it's really great to make sure that you make it a point to learn something new. So I'm always on the lookout for that. And uh, also, you know, whoever's watching and whoever will watch in the future, please connect with me. I'm always on LinkedIn, always respond to my messages. I may take a day or two, uh, especially because of the flood of messages I get. But feel free to reach out to me and I'm happy to talk with you. All right. Thank you very much, Ashley. If yeah. anyone's watching this later, her link to her LinkedIn is underneath the video and in the show notes for the podcast. I really appreciate you coming on. Yeah, for uh, sure. Happy connect to be with here. us, Latinos in Clinical Research, Save Our Sites Conference, and then just connect with Ashley. She's a co-founder of all of those things as well. Thank you very much, Ashley. Thanks. <clears throat> so anyone else who uh, has questions or anything, let me know. Otherwise, I might go live later today. But like, subscribe, comment, share. Grew Nation. Catch you all later. Bye-bye.